Welcome to my definitive beginner's guide to Streets of Rage 4, a game that came out four years ago at this point. If you're coming to this game late, I'm here to help you understand the basics, the interesting systems, and why this game is so damn good. If you're already a casual fan of the game, I'm here to make you a mega fan by showing you the depth you had no idea was there. This video will be separated into chapters, so feel free to skip around and pass over stuff you may already know. But unlike most tutorials that start with basic combat options, we will instead be starting with the massively important point system, which is what makes Streets of Rage 4 the masterpiece that it is. I will regularly be pulling everything back to the point system, so be ready for that. If you want to skip the points explanation and go straight to attacks and combos, you can, but I highly recommend you stay for this section. In this video, we will be covering the point system, basic attacks, charge attacks, OTGs, special attacks, blitz attacks, throwable and swingable objects, supers, combo launchers and wall bounces, grabs, invincibility frames, and enemy behaviors. I'll preface this by stating that I am not a speedrunner, I'm not a pro that knows every exploit or optimal strategy. I'm simply an incredibly passionate fan of the game, and I'm decent at explaining shit, so let's get into it. There are two game modes, Story and Arcade, the difference being that Story mode has continues and Arcade mode does not. Do not pick Arcade mode first. You need to play Story mode to get a handle on what's going on here. So in Story mode, you start with a certain amount of lives depending on your chosen difficulty. You may have five, you may have two. When you lose all your lives, you start the level over. There are no checkpoints. You have to make it to the end of the level, and you're able to gain extra lives by earning points. You need 8,000 points to get an extra life. But Arcade Mode gives you a set amount of lives at the beginning which carry over into the next levels, and if you lose all your lives, the game is over. These continue systems are the key to Streets of Rage 4's challenge-based gameplay. The higher difficulty you choose, the fewer lives you start with. It's easier to die, and there's more pressure to get points so you have enough lives to finish the level. So how do you get points? You can get a few points picking up money around the stage, and when you pick up a healing item while having full health, you get a point bonus. But you primarily get points by damaging enemies, and it's based on damage. You'll see here that I get 6 points per punch as I'm attacking with Axel, but the higher the damage, the more points. A jump kick gives me 12, because it's more damage. A body slam gives even more, 36 points. More damage, more points. Different characters have different point values because their attacks do different amounts of damage. Blaze's punch does 4 points, Adam's punch does 8. This combo counter text is really big, it obscures enemies, so I suggest going into the HUD options and setting it to small, but for the purposes of the video, I'll just use the large setting. As the combo counter goes up, it starts changing color, and this signifies the increase of a behind-the-scenes multiplier that grants a point bonus when the combo is over. So you're earning points for every bit of damage you land, but the game is also calculating bonus points to be rewarded once your combo has finished. Let's see that in action. I'm doing some combos here, racking up damage and points, while the combo counter is turning orange, then green, then blue, and after a few seconds of no action, the combo counter expires and grants a final calculation based on the multiplier, taking all the points I just gained and adding a bonus on top. This is why you want to do continuous damage in Streets of Rage 4. Keep the combo counter from expiring by always staying active, and build a combo as high as it can go. You need to land hits to keep the counter going, but you can also extend it by making contact with environmental objects or picking up money or food items, and grabbing onto an enemy will freeze the counter until you do something. The counter will progress through a series of colors, yellow all the way to red, and when the counter finally expires, you'll get a massive bonus. And the multiplier is quite significant. See here that entering a green rank combo and letting it expire grants me only 450 points extra, but expiring at the start of a purple rank is 1500 points. Early into a red combo and I'm getting 4600 points. And here's a long running red combo granting a whopping 23,000 points. So if you maintain really long combos, you can seriously get some extra lives, and that'll make higher difficulties more accessible to you. What makes this system amazing is the risk-reward involved. If you get hit at any moment during a combo, you lose the entirety of the bonus. In Streets of Rage 4, you're faced with the decision of, do I stop this combo now and take all the bonus points I've already earned, or do I keep building a combo and risk possibly getting hit and losing everything? 
It's an addictive rush that leads to incredibly satisfying victories and devastating losses. No! Now, the strategies for preserving your combo counter are what the game is all about, and that's where we need to get into the details of offense and defense. So finally, let's look at the attacks on offer. Who should you start with for your first time? I'm gonna recommend Axel or Blaze due to their simplicity, and once you reach level 5 you'll unlock Adam, and then you should experiment with him, because he has Axel and Blaze's simplicity but he also has a dash, which is gonna help a lot of newcomers get into the game. For this guide I'm gonna be using Blaze to explain the game, because I play her and like I said she's a good starting character. The attack button will throw out a single punch, but once it makes contact, pressing it again will lead to different attacks coming out, completing a combo string. Blaze's combo string pushes enemies away at the end, but the enemy does not make contact with those behind him. Compare this to Adam, whose final hit sends enemies crashing into everyone else, knocking them down. When hitting enemies, they'll be in a certain amount of stun, so you can get in a series of attacks by pausing between them, raising your total damage instead of just mashing out the string. Jumping forward plus attack will do your standard jump kick, good for crowd controls and combos in the corner, and jumping straight up and attacking will do a different style kick. This is what we call a neutral jump kick, as you're jumping without moving forward or backwards. Neutral jump kicks are good for catching enemies in the air as they bounce back to you from the corner, or for coming straight down on an enemy that's coming towards you. You can alter your aerial attack by holding down, which changes your kick into a downward punch. It does not knock down enemies like the kick, instead it puts them in a combo stun, opening them up to a combo string or a grab. This is an incredibly useful attack because when an enemy is getting up off the ground, you can time this attack to hit them before they can do anything about it. Pressing down an attack twice in the air will result in a bouncing follow-up, which depending on your character can result in some pretty cool combo juggles. In addition to your own physical attacks, you'll find weapons around the stage to pick up and throw or swing at the enemies. Use the circle button on PlayStation or B on Xbox to pick things up. Or on Nintendo, what is it? S? Uh, I don't know. These are typically high damage single hitting attacks. If you hold forward and press the pick up button, you can throw the weapon. And some weapons can be caught as they're coming back to you. This also means you can catch weapons that are thrown at you by enemies. You'll also find grenades, firebombs, bowling balls, lots of fun stuff to play with. If you pick up something you don't want, just throw it away by pressing the pick up button. Alright, moving on to more basics. If you hold the attack button, Blaze will flash yellow and the releasing of the button will do a charged backfist. It's not a great move, but it could serve as a decent combo launcher, creating a wall bounce. And if you charge it quickly during a combo string, you can connect a series of punches to the charge attack. The best thing about Blaze's charge attack is probably its decently long range, being much longer than her normal punch. Every character has a different charge attack that does different things. Axel's charge attack is an advancing kick that pushes enemies into others behind them. Max's is a ground pound that bounces enemies in the corner for big combo damage. You'll have to experiment with your character to find the utility of their unique charge attack. Back attack is what it sounds like, you attack behind you. There are three ways to do it, you can press back plus attack, or you can press attack and jump together, or you can just press the right trigger. The right trigger is my preferred option because the others can happen by accident. I suggest going into the input options and disabling the other two ways of activating it. Leave it as just a trigger function. Back attack can be useful, but can also leave you open from the front. Some back attacks are better than others. Blazes has pretty good range, lowering her hurt box, making her small, avoiding attacks, and it knocks enemies down. Not a bad option. Back attacks are great against Dylans, the guys with their hands in their pockets. They love to advance on you when your back is turned to them, and they're programmed not to attack until you're facing them. So if you just face away and use back attacks, they'll walk into it over and over until they die. It's cheap, but screw them, they're dicks anyways, they deserve it. The next attack is my favorite, Blitz Attack. This is performed by double tapping forward and then pressing attack. 
For Blaze, this is a double hitting high damage front flip that bounces for combo. See that I can do a combo string into the blitz attack which can then connect to the charged back fist because it has really good range. The blitz front flip in the corner can connect to a neutral jump kick and then can be followed up with a full combo string on the ground. You have to be careful with blitz attacks though. They feel like you can just spam them because they're so powerful, but they have a lot of recovery frames, and the higher difficulty you play, the more dangerous they will become as the enemies start sneaking in hits and you lose your combo from sloppily using blitz attacks all the time. You'll also notice that this blitz attack is able to hit enemies when they're on the ground, when normally they're safe. This is called an OTG, for off the ground, or on the ground, I don't know. Point is, it hits enemies in this grounded state. This means you can identify that an enemy has fallen, and you can quickly do an attack with OTG properties, like Blaze's Blitz attack, and then you get another combo going, or at least get in a little extra damage. Max has a charge attack that OTGs, making for great corner bounces. Adam's Blitz and Axel's Blitz will hit once as an OTG. Blitz attacks can be connected to any grounded normal attack you're doing, and can even cancel out of certain animations. Blaze's normal combo ends with a double kick, and you can actually jump out of that kick animation. Here you could input a blitz or something else to have the same canceling effect. See here how Axel's back attack is actually a double hit, and instead of letting it finish, I can cancel it with a blitz. So you're starting to see how all the pieces fit together. Let's check out a couple of examples of combo damage using normal attacks, charge attacks, blitz attacks, and OTGs. Whoa, what was that move at the end? Well, that's Blaze's Fireball, which is one of her three special attacks. We'll call them Neutral Special, Forward Special, and Air Special. Neutral Special, pressing Special Attack and nothing else, will cause Blaze to do a backflip kick. This move and all characters' Neutral Specials are fully invincible. Use this not so much for damage, but to protect yourself from incoming attacks you can't avoid. So that's very powerful, right? A fully invincible special attack? Well, it's not free. Every time you use a special, it deducts health, creating a green deficit. If you take any damage while you have a deficit like this, not only do you take the damage of the hit, you lose all the green health too. If you're abusing special attacks and then you get hit, you can lose a substantial amount of health, and then you'll be in a really bad position until you come across food. But if you have a green health deficit, you can recover it by landing normal attacks. Watch as the green bar starts filling back up as I hit enemies with combos. You'll want to find a balance between using invincible specials and your normal attacks that refill your health bar. This is one of the greatest mechanics of Streets of Rage 4, and you'll always be thinking about it. The higher difficulty you choose, the more green health is taken from you when you use a special, increasing the risk of abusing them, but you'll also need them more because the game gets crazier. You'll notice that you can combo enemies after they die, and that's a huge part of regaining your green health. Figure out your character and you'll be able to improvise long combos on a dead enemy to recover a substantial amount. See how this enemy is dead from just a few basic hits of a combo, but instead I connect it to my blitz attack to get a few more extra hits to recharge my green health. Watch me refill a giant portion of my green health just from attacking one enemy and then doing a combo on him after he's already dead. Keep in mind that extending combos on dead enemies does not increase the point multiplier or give you any extra points per hit, since it's based on damage and you're not doing any damage to them because they're dead. You're just doing this to recover your green health, to have some stylish expressive fun, and to extend the combo counter, because if an enemy is far away, you can beat up on his dead friend in the meantime, keeping the combo counter fresh, waiting for him to get close. 
As you're experimenting with combo strings and charge attacks and specials, you'll start to get a handle on wall bounces. You can bounce an enemy off a wall up to three times using several powerful attacks, depending on your character. Take advantage of these moments to do amazing damage on a high health enemy, and they even work on some boss fights. Wall bounces are insanely fun to do in co-op because you can find some pretty broken juggles, and there are so many cool moments of improvisation. Just like blitz attacks, specials can cancel animations. Here you can see that double hitting back attack of Axel getting cancelled into a special attack. For a high damaging grounded combo, we can do his normal combo into charge attack, cancelled into blitz, and then cancel the end with a special. And every character has a forward special, just hold forward and press special attack. That gives us Blaze's fireball, which is not fully invincible, but it's her best way of reaching a distant enemy and pushing away groups of dangerous enemies. It's also a great combo launcher. Some forward specials are incredibly powerful, and can be invincible as well. Axel unleashes a flurry of punches on a group of enemies, basically killing everyone. Max charges forward, knocking everyone down. There's a lot to experiment with. Ending a 3-hit combo with a special attack is your safest way to attack a group of enemies, because there are holes in your offense where you can be hit. These combo strings have gaps in them, so after punch 3, you can get hit before the next attack comes out. Enemies in front of you will be waiting for this opportunity to sneak in a punch and ruin your combo counter. But if you connect your third attack to a special, in this case a flip kick or a fireball, the enemy that tries to interrupt you will be hit instead. It's an expensive way to play, considering the green health cost, but it'll keep you safe. These invincible specials are crucial for escaping combo damage as well. Some enemies and bosses have multi-hitting attacks that you'll be locked into, unless you use a special to escape. If you do a special in the air, you'll get another unique attack, like Adam's spinning dragon kick, Max's body slam that can bounce off walls and then OTG a downed opponent. And Blaze here has a really cool flying kick that can be done up to three times, making for some really cool combo opportunities, and maybe more importantly, a great way for her to stay off the ground when things are getting out of control. It's a good way to escape when something bad is coming your way, and it's her only way to move forward quickly since she doesn't have a dash or run command. She can also cancel the animation of her blitz attack into the special kick because she's in an airborne state. Even more powerful than specials are star moves, this game's version of a super attack, performed by hitting special and pick up together. You start with one star every level, and you can find more as you advance, sometimes in obvious places, sometimes hidden away. And you can get one star for completing a secret retro mode challenge if you use a taser on an arcade cabinet to fight an old school boss. Star moves are invincible, hitting enemies all around you or in front of you, you do decent damage, and it OTGs and interrupts any enemy in its path. Unlike a game like Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge where most of the supers are essentially the same, star moves are unique and have great combo applications, outside of just being a panic move you pull when you're about to die. Blaze has that classic X-Men arcade Colossus super that hits all around her, while Adam puts an explosion in front of him, Cherry slides across the entire screen, and Floyd has a Marvel superhero's proton cannon. Save these star moves for when you really need them, to save yourself from death or to extend a great combo, and as you learn the levels, you'll figure out specific points you'll want to use them. Okay, I'm going to take a little break, um, I'm losing my voice, and then we will get back with grabs. <clears throat> okay, next up is grabs, and I'm a huge proponent of grab usage in this game. They're fun, they're offensively useful, but more importantly, defensively useful. Grabs are performed by walking into an enemy's hurt box. If an enemy is above or below you on the 2D plane, just walk up or down into them and you'll grab them automatically. Now, this will lead to some frustration. You'll find yourself accidentally grabbing enemies from time to time, and it'll mess up your flow. I wish there were a separate grab button, but it is what it is. Grabs are amazing for three reasons. Crowd control, enemy positioning, and free invincibility setups. 
Depending on what side you're on, you'll do a different kind of grab. Blaze, for example, when grabbing from the back, does a high damaging suplex when you press the attack button. But if we press the jump button to flip over, which has iframes, we throw them from the front, and that smashes the enemy into the ground. If you hold back and press attack, she throws the enemy behind her into anyone else who happens to be there. So, from the forward grab position, you can also press attack plus the forward input, and you'll do a single hit. You can do this a few times before it ends in a final hit, that also tends to bounce or launch for combo. This is a great way to get in a little extra damage before throwing. Those extra couple hits can make the difference between a dead enemy and a living one. You'll need to experiment with your character to see how these different grab hits apply to your strategy. Positioning enemies with throws is a crucial strategy for keeping your combo counter going. Watch as I take two enemies spawning on the left side and immediately throw them to the right, so I can bunch them up on the right wall, and that way when they die, I'm already close to the right side, so I can continue moving forward quickly, keeping my combo counter active. Using grabs as a finishing blow can send an enemy airborne, giving you just a bit more time to get moving before the combo counter expires. The third and most important function of grabs is invincibility frames in reactive defense. During throw animations, you are completely invincible, which makes grabs a wonderful strategic option for defending yourself. Watch here. I'm attacking an enemy, and I see that another is about to hit me. So I grab the guy in front of me, and when the other one does his attack, I throw the guy I'm holding, nullifying the damage of the incoming attack. Here are a few more examples of grab iframes saving the day. This brings us back, as all things do, to the point system, where we always want to be mindful of the combo counter and the changing colors, multiplying our point gain. If we're using invincible specials a lot to keep ourselves from getting hit, we're draining a lot of our green health and we put ourselves in a dangerous position. But if we use grabs to get those same iframes, we're protecting our combo meter for free. It's just a little trickier to set up. Okay, that pretty much covers how character control works and game theory. You can take all this information and go play the game. If you want to stick around, we'll talk a little bit about the enemies. But before we move on to the enemies, I'll showcase a little of what it looks like when all this gameplay comes together, and hopefully you'll recognize most of what I've shown you. Yeah! 
Now, the enemies. Streets of Rage 4 has a lot of enemy types, usually one or two introduced per level, and with each enemy comes multiple variations that have higher HP values, modified attack properties, possibly even completely new attacks. Our first enemy in the first level is the classic Galcia, typical street punk. He just punches at you, he's fairly slow and has low HP. The dangerous thing about Galcia is that he loves to pick up sharp objects. Galcias run around the stage with a knife in their hand, and you will get stabbed. You'll come to curse the name Galcia. Galcia! This is a great moment to use the downward jumping attack to avoid the knife, and then start a basic combo that'll kill him. An enemy very similar to Galcia is BT, who is basically the same without the weapons. But he has more HP and he's more aggressive. BT loves to jab you in the gaps of your offense, and many of your combos will be interrupted by him. Kill him immediately when you see him, he's stronger than you think. Next up is Signal, and they're a real nuisance. They dance around the stage like idiots, running away from you half the time. They come in with a back fist, which will sometimes hit you out of the air, but much worse is their slide attack. Catch them with a neutral down attack for a combo and maximize your damage to kill them. These guys are much worse as their color ranking changes, and just in one level you'll see the dangerous of green signals as they start sliding all over the place. They also have a really annoying and fast grab. They'll throw you across the stage. You can negate the damage by pressing the jump button before you land, but the time loss is horrible. They will break a lot of your combos. They do flash red before they grab you, but if you're coming in and trying to punch them, they'll just grab you right away sometimes. Signals make a grunting sound before any of their attacks, so be ready to react with a special or a jump. Mid-level 1, you'll meet Kubo, Kobo, I don't know how you say it, Kobu, a very deadly enemy that only appears a handful of times in the whole game, a mini-boss of sorts. Since he's kind of big, he has different gravity. He doesn't launch as high for combos, so he tends to live longer than most enemies, not just because of his health bar, but because you're doing less combo damage to him. You want to kind of stick him a few times and then maybe go in for some extra grab damage. Just maximize as much damage as you can. Kobus will catch pipes that are thrown at them, spawn pipes in their hand and throw them at you, go into momentary invulnerable states that cause pipes to magically fly at you, and they jump off screen, crashing down in your location. They're vulnerable to jumping attacks, so abuse that, come in with a jump down attack and start some combo damage. And when they jump off screen, I like to use a special attack for the iframes, damaging him as he lands, and then comboing him to get the green health back. Level 1 also has two more enemies that are sure to make you rage. First is the meme himself, Donovan. Donovan will become an enemy that stays in your mind till the end of your days. He's got BT's fast jab, he moves pretty fast, and he loves to pick up bats and pipes. Get ready to get bopped around the stage a million times by this bald, sunglasses-wearing idiot. Your greatest combo will be interrupted by Donovan swinging a pipe. But the worst thing about Donovan is actually his anti-air uppercut. He's the first enemy that exists to shut down jump kick spam. Jumping towards Donovan is a giant risk because there's a good chance he'll anti-air you. He doesn't do it every time, which is kind of genius. It makes you want to jump because you're like, yeah, I can jump at him. He won't anti-air me this time. And then he does, and you feel stupid, cursing yourself for jumping at Donovan for the 500th time when you know you shouldn't. Again, I'll mention the jumping down attack. Once Donovan is on the ground, come in with this and catch him as he wakes up. He can't wake up with an anti-air. Most normal enemies can't do wake-up attacks in this game, so just go in and don't let them get started. Donovans are high-priority targets. Get them off the board, especially if there's a bat on the ground. Higher tier versions of Donovan will actually catch weapons when you throw them, and they'll throw them right back at you. Next is Dylan, a truly annoying enemy. I already talked about how he likes to only advance towards you when your back is facing him. Well, like Donovan, Dylan will also anti-air you. Instantly. The moment he sees you even leave the ground, he'll snap into his kick animation and knock you down. But again, like Donovan, he doesn't do this every time. 
In fact, it's less frequent than Donovan's uppercut. So you can jump at Dylan, just be ready to possibly get anti-aired if you do. His other attack is a headbutt that stuns you, and Dylan is one of the rare enemies of Streets of Rage 4 that will hit you on wake up. Be very careful trying to attack him as he wakes up, because he's probably going to headbutt you for free. Use an invincible special or do the jumping down attack to counter his wake up headbutt. That covers all the enemies in level 1, I'm going to leave the bosses in this game for you to discover, you can look up strategies if you want. Let's go on to level 2. Now we have the cops, Ferocio and Murphy. Murphy being an obvious homage to Robocop. He has a shield that must be broken before you damage him. Watch for his wind-up animation and then either jump and attack on the way down, or use a special attack to negate the damage. The standard blue cops, Ferocio, are slow, vulnerable to air attacks, and have a medium amount of HP. They just walk up and punch you. The yellow version will flash red and then come in and grab you, which you can break by mashing buttons. This grab will allow other cops to punch you. That's gonna happen. The dark blue cops are very dangerous with their ability to run in and grab you and use their taser. Be very careful with them and kill immediately. Level 3 introduces the fat guys, Big Ben, and they are annoying. The red forms will run at you spitting fire that'll hit you on the ground or in the air. They have a lot of HP, and of course they're heavy so you can't bounce them for very long. Figure out your long-standing combos, integrate grabs and OTGs, and get rid of these guys as soon as possible. Use your specials to fly through their flame attack, or sidestep it and punish them as they walk past. Be careful that on wake up they're invincible and roll away, so anticipate that and be ready to catch them as they come out of the animation. Higher tier versions are even worse, with some that jump at you and others that roll around on the ground. I don't even know how to deal with the rollers to be honest, I just die. Level 4 has another incredibly annoying enemy, Ruby, who jumps at you diagonally so you can't just move up or down to avoid her. She'll also hit you out of the air as she jumps, though you can interrupt her with your own jump attack, which is an okay strategy. Like Dylan, she has a wake-up attack, a slap, so make sure you catch her on wake-up with a jumping down attack or a special. Ruby loves to ambush you with her friends and put you into a panic state. She will infuriate you, and her yell is something you'll never forget. In level 5 you'll meet Sugar, a really cheap enemy because her charging forward attack will commonly activate off screen, and she'll barrel into the stage hitting you by surprise. She's another heavy character, so your normal combo bounces won't work. I find it helpful to grab and throw Sugar into the rest of her friends as crowd control. And since she doesn't have an anti-air, use your jump kicks. Interrupting her charge attack with a downward air punch is inconsistent, you could still get hit. So go with a neutral jump kick instead, or sidestep their charge and get a combo and a grab. Level 6 introduces what may be the most annoying enemy in the game, Raven. He flies forward at you with a charging knee, and his shin kick probably outranges your normal attacks. Jumping at him is a risk due to the fast flying knee attack, and when you attack him, it's possible he'll block eventually countering your offense with his own. When he's blocking, walk forward and grab him. Launch for combo if possible. Approach him vertically so you can grab. Coming at him straight on is really risky because of that shin kick. These guys are nightmares, but they're a great enemy that encourages the grab mechanic. And so is the next enemy, Goro, which is kinda like the Doom Eternal Marauder of this game. He follows his own rules in a way. He's very heavy, so you're not gonna do big combos on him. He has a really fast charging punch with an invulnerable startup that knocks you across the stage. He has a parry, so if you attack him on the ground, he's probably gonna counter you, but you can actually trigger his parry and then activate a special to go through it. And he breaks grabs. If you grab him, you gotta throw him immediately or he'll get out. Sidestepping and attacking plus a quick grab is actually a great way to fight Goro, it's just you gotta throw quickly or he'll escape. He's vulnerable to air attacks, but if you do one while he goes into his invulnerable state, you could eat a heavy punch. You can bait these guys into punching you, and when they miss, go for the combo. Stage 7 doesn't introduce any new enemies, but hey, that music sounds a lot like Aphex Twin.
turns out the name of this song is Aphex Train. Okay, that's pretty clever. Level 8 has an enemy that you're all going to hate. Victoria, or as I call her, the hipster bitch. She throws Molotov cocktails at you. That's bad enough, but she's also quite evasive and will try to push you away when you get close. You can get in easy with jump attacks, and some characters' aerial specials will help you deal with all the firebombs on the ground. You can actually catch her firebomb and throw it back at her. Depending on your attack options, you can launch her in a way that causes her to land on her own firebomb. She's gonna mess you up, I don't know what to say other than avoid the fire, jump attack her on wake up, and delete her health bar as fast as possible. There's a higher blue version of her that's much worse, throwing electricity bombs with a massive diameter. Good luck. Level 9 has the Assassin, the first of two enemies with a true projectile. Prepare to get shot out of nowhere. They're heavy, so you can't do big combos, they have a lot of HP, but it's just the one attack, a gunshot. They have no melee ability or wake-ups, so you can just bully them. You'll want to prioritize them, because random gunshots are not fun to deal with. Level 10 doesn't have any new enemies, but the Donovans are throwing bats at you now, that's wonderful. And here you'll see the rolling fat guy, have fun with that. Level 11 has the last unique enemy, which is essentially the level 3 boss with different health values. She's pretty standard, she's weak to jump ins, I think you can just kinda bully her. Beyond this, you'll be dealing with variations of every enemy in the game, but I'm not gonna go through all of them. The worst is probably the Gold Donovans, because they have protective armor, so you can't even pressure them on wake up. And the high level Kobus that jump around the screen multiple times, oh man, they're nightmares. Save your star moves and cross your fingers. I'm not a pro, these guys still kill me. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about bosses, I think it's better if you figure that out on your own. You can look up boss strategies online if you want, but if I go to it here, the video is going to balloon out of control. There's also another game mode called Survival, and I highly recommend it. It's really fun, you pick up power-ups between each round, and it's really fun in co-op. Playing with different characters unlocks alternate attacks for them to be used in the campaign. New specials, blitz attacks, even new super moves. Once you've beaten story mode a few times, give arcade mode a try. There's really nothing like the rush of having to maintain lives at the risk of a total game over. Learn to master different characters, play with a friend, and just have a good time. This is one of my favorite games of all time, definitely top 10, and it's been wonderful to make this guide for you. Here I'll ask that you just help me out on my way to 150,000 subs by hitting the subscribe button. I'm going to do a video on Prey from 2017 once I hit 150. Share this video with a beat-em-up enthusiast, and thanks for watching.